Hello and welcome back. This is Jennifer and today I have another shortened live replay. The other day I went live with Kelly Marie Alvarez who is one of the owners of Lawn Fawn and one of my favorite human beings. She is so much fun and brings such great joy. Now it was a longer live. You could check it out up here on the top right or in my description below. In that live, I shared some stitched cards and she shared how to do a faux chalkboard technique that you gotta check out. Now, I have all of that kind of condensed in this video to the best that I could, but if you wanna learn more about Lawn Fawn or other techniques, be sure to check out the longer live. I just like to have the longer live replay and the shortened replay available depending on your needs. I will say that Kelly shared a lot of examples in the full live, so you might want to look into that. Also, she shared an incredible offer. It's a unique one for Lawn Fawn. It's 15% off site-wide, and you get a free roll of washi tape with an order. So I thought I would mention that here. You can see the details on the screen and in my description below. So be sure to check that out, and let's get started with today's shortened replay. Now let's go ahead and welcome Kelly Marie, Kelly Marie Alvarez from Lawn Fawn. Look Hi, at her, she's well, adorable. Well, now I'm like tearing up because I was really sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Oh, I am so glad to be here. I am so excited. How, long, how old is Lawn Fawn now? Lawn Fawn is 14 years old, 14 which is years old. wild. Lawn Fawn is a teenager. Lawn Fawn's in a high school, I guess. <laughs> See, proof teenage years are good. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, there you go, right? Yeah, so yeah, 14 years actually, and it just happened March 10th. So we just turned Aww, 14. Happy which is birthday. Really Thank you. So, and, so you yes. and Erica 14 years yes. ago, right? 14 years ago, me, Erica, and Mike, um, we, it was my idea. I'm the crafter. Erica is this incredible artist. And um, I was like, hey, do you want to do something crazy? So, <laughs> um, yeah, we came out with four stamp sets and um 14 years ago on our website and that's how we started which is really cool <laughs> okay so now ever you got to tell everybody how the name came up yes so the name is actually named i can grab him it's named after this guy right here there he is <laughs> so we met in college playing in the orchestra pits for musicals um and i so i love deer i have since i was a little girl i had imaginary pet deer as one does um and so i just i don't know i just think they're so gentle and sweet my dad and i used to ride our bikes to go see them and and so my brother as a joke gave me this light up lawn ornament for my 21st birthday and we used to light him up in the middle of the orchestra pits and he became our good luck charm so much so that the university actually wanted to keep him because he became no. so well known <laughs> for these musicals but i was like oh no he's got to stay with me and as a joke i named him francois the lawn fawn because i thought yep. it was just a silly name for a lawn ornament and so when we started the company which was gosh almost 10 years later we thought it would be cute to name it after our good luck charm so that's why we named him and so he he kind of moves his way around the office sometimes he you know he stares us down <laughs> Francois has been, been around for a long time, long, longer than Lawn Fawn has. I know. He's been around forever. He's just been hanging out in my house one way or the other. His, his, the part of him that lights up has long been lost over the years. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but yeah, so he's our little good luck charm. So <laughs> That's awesome. We, um, we're kind of winging it today. We just yep. wanted an excuse to get together and do this. So Kelly has a card that she's going to share. Uh, and that she's going to create. And she'll probably show some examples along the way because she's in Lawn Fawn headquarters. So she's got examples galore, <laughs> right? And um, I am going to do some stitching with some of their embroidery hoop dies. I like that mine just starts with a bell pepper in it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm hungry. So that works for me. Oh yeah. So today what we're crafting with is going to be your veggies for the week. So wonderful. Like, that's gonna be great. So, we so if we're have, having our veggies now, we can have dessert for dinner. Yes. Ice cream for dinner is a staple for me. So wonderful. I believe everybody, not everybody should be having ice cream for dinner tonight because wonderful. We are die cutting our veggies today and I think it counts. It does count. <laughs> and look at all the veggies. I know we have so many because we had to have our garden veggies and our root veggies. You know, you've got to have uh, both. <laughs> smart, smart, smart. So what do you have there? 
So I have our stitch garden veggies and our stitch root veggies, and we're going to be creating a cute card inspired by those like classic farmer's market signs that are kind of that chalkboard feeling. Um, and so we are going to be using these to create that. And we're going to be using die cut papers and adding just a little inking to show how to get this like incredibly ink blended look really easy. So I'm excited Wonderful. about that. Wonderful. This is the newest one. The flower yes. one just came out in this last release. So I am doing some stitching with that. And I'm going to mostly do some stitching and then kind of pull some cards together. But really the technique today is you got to see what Kelly's doing. So we're going to go just do a little side by side. But what she's doing, I think, is um, something that you definitely need to see. So you want to go ahead and get started? Yeah, I would love to. Yeah, I wanted to show a little bit about, so I've die cut a bunch of my veggies. I have my little bell pepper here, my favorite veggie. And um, I wanted to show you, we have these textured card stocks. And I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but what's beautiful about them is there's a texture on one side and then there's a smooth on the other. So depending on what look you're going for, you can use either side of the cardstock and then each pack has like all these shades of purple or shades of red and orange and so that's the cardstocks that, that I use for all of these veggies and I use the smooth side for them and then all I'm going to do is just take an ink color that's a little bit darker and ink blend on it and that's going to give me this really cool look so I like to just get a little bit of ink on a brush and I tap it off and then I just go really light because you can always add more but you can't take away you know so, so what, I just like what to, colors are you using there so this is from our um yellow textures yeah, and then this is number two pencil ink which honestly looks brilliant exactly like number two pencil <laughs> it does it does your name your names are absolutely brilliant <laughs> i love have that fun one with them. our meetings used to be right before lunch and we just moved them right back yeah, to I right before back lunch to so if you notice, a lot of our things are either named after food or themed with food, uh, and, and that's why. <laughs> so now you can see that we went from like a plain cardstock to like this beautiful thing in, in two seconds. And you can yeah, always go back and say, long. oh, yeah, I want a little bit more here. Oh, it looks so pretty. Okay, I love that, you know. And so then I can move on to the next color. And then, and even yep. here now, I'm actually going to use it on um, this like pinky color for the tomato. And then I'm gonna bring the lobster ink onto it and like leave the top of the tomato a little bit lighter. And the cute so thing what, about the, oh, sorry. Is is that your texture card stock too? This is the texture too. This is the red and okay. oranges pack. So yep. I used all the textures for the veggies. Okay, okay. Um, just, yeah, just to kind of keep it in the same family. Um, yep. And so, yeah, you can see now. And what's really cute about these veggies, too, is they have little faces that you can die cut from them. So they can be serious uh. veggies like they are here <laughs> or they can be silly veggies like this gorgeous card by Shari Aww. here. So you can okay. die cut the little faces out of them. And um, there's nothing like a carrot smiling at you, really. So and now I'm going to bring a carrot in. And I'm going to use pumpkin spice for the carrot. We actually have a carrot ink, but what I like to do when I'm inking these cardstocks is do the shade that's just a little bit darker. So that's why I'm bringing in gotcha. the, the darker orange. And you'll see yep. it just kind of makes, and by the way, they're super cute out of plain cardstock. You don't have to do this, but it's sure. just fun. Sure. You could also use like felt with those. That would be cute. Um, oh yeah. Or some subtle pattern papers. So cute. <laughs> Wonderful. And where do you, where are your products? You get products made in the U.S., right? Yes, so our, our almost everything, 95% of what we do is in the US, our stamps, our dyes, um, our stencils, uh, whatever we can make here, we do. Um, and so uh, we, really, we really love that we're able to do that. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so it's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, folks are always asking which companies are, so I wanted to make sure that was, that was mentioned. Um, while she continues to ink blend, I saw some people just catching in um, I am doing the Lawn Fawn Embroidery Hoop uh, dies. So I'm doing some flowers because this, this die here, the flower add-on, is their newest. And um, I really I want you guys to see the card that Kelly's putting together here. So I'm not really focusing much on stitching here. I have a lot of stitching videos. If you go to my YouTube channel and do stitching you, and search on stitching or stitch, you'll see a lot show up. Um, I'll just tell you the basic of what I'm doing, and then I'm going to um, maybe assemble a couple cards here because I did a bunch of stitching yesterday. Um, but I 
I, for the Lawn Fawn stitching dies, I, I'm a little different. I don't know how, do, when you use um, DMC floss, uh, do you use all six ply when you stitch with your dies? Usually three, but I will okay. say that, so Shari and Rebecca from our team are, are, are the experts and I'm yep. not, so when I stitch, I make it really simple. So like I would probably just use six because I'm not, um, as well versed in stitching um yep. and so i just i just do something really simple but if you're doing a more intricate design like yours which is so gorgeous then maybe you would want to use the three so it would be a bit thinner i use three to four maybe. yeah and rebecca says she yep. uses three to four well that's what i'm doing i did four so the the dmc floss that i'm using comes in six ply so there's th six little threads together some people keep them together like she said you can peel them apart. I peeled apart four and I find that, that that's what I used for all these and I find that works really um, works really well for me. As far as um, the, I'm just doing basic back stitch on all of this. So I'm not gonna talk too much about what I'm doing but you can also watch as, um, as we do, as she creates also. But I actually did the wrong color there. But um, I'm just, you know, you can keep these very simple by just doing the outline stitching only. You can also leave it unstitched and put colored cardstock to show through the holes. I just, I enjoy these. Okay, so what do you got going on over there? Are you putting some veggies so, together? Yes, so now I'm putting some veggies together. And this is the part, like, so for me, like, crafting, it just makes me smile. And there's something about once you put the little tops on these veggies, like, I, I'm assuming everyone else is smiling too. I just think it's so cute. Um, they're just adorable and like they just look amazing just with that one color of ink, you know um, And so what I'm doing to help myself add the veggies you'll see so like the tomato and the onion You just layer it either behind or on top But on these other ones we actually designed the die to have see that little it's a little cut line And so sometimes I'll even take my ah. pokey tool and just kind of open that up a little bit so that it's really easy to then, um, for example, take this little leaf and tuck it right in. And that's what makes these look so cute is the, the leaf tucked in like that, I think is what makes it feel really special. Oh. Um, and so the little cut line just makes it so cool. And so all I do then is I just add a little drop of glue to the end and then I can just tuck that right in. Nice. And it'll fold just like that. So I just did a All tip right. that I learned from you way back in the day, and that's if your heat embossing gets a little bit, as I would, funky, I just yep. took my wet gel pen out and, um, and filled in the lines, and it, and it looks great now. Just I had one little missed spot. I didn't press down hard enough, and, well, um, and so it's such a good tip. Oh, my goodness. And then now I'm going to do, um, so I want to make this kind of feel like a chalkboard. And this is really cute for teacher cards, like you just mentioned. Yes. And what I do is I take out, this is Yeti pigment ink, which is a white pigment ink. But, you know, we had to name it something cute. So I love Yeti. Of course. And, um, and so what I'm going to do is take ink on my finger. And then I'm just, I have some tissues here. I'm just going to take off some. And then I'm just going to, like, kind of smear it up here. See, and it's going to start uh, to give it like that, like chalkboard look. And the nice thing about this is you can't really mess it up because it, it's chalk, right? So it kind of gives that like dirty chalkboard feel, which I think is brilliant. really fun. And I'm going to go over this the is, letter stuff. This is brilliant because when I did it, I tried to do it with a white pencil and it was not easy. Oh, yeah. Look that's, that. I, yeah, you just, it's just like finger painting, just kind of, yes. you know, and you can always add a little bit more later. You can even come in and like kind of buff it out too, like with a little tissue or paper towel. It looks like a chalkboard. Kinda... Isn't that cute? <laughs> and uh. then so now I'm going to take one of those, remember how we talked about the stitch rectangle frames earlier that fit the, um, yeah. we're going to, I'm going to take one of these that I've die cut out of some brown card stock. And when I, when I, so when I ink, like, so I've inked all my veggies, right? And if I've inked my cardstock, I feel like I have to ink all the cardstocks. Do you feel like that? Like, then this oh, yeah. one looks, yeah. this one looks naked. It needs some, no, it needs some ink. no naked. <laughs> hey, it, no okay, naked listen, cardstock. if your veggies are wearing toupees, your frame <laughs> needs a little ink. 
needs some little, pants, I mean, maybe. <laughs> exactly, right? I mean, we could we could give these veggies faces, so you know. We could, um, we could. So I'm just going around That's the edges awesome. to give it that. And this one I use, so this one I use the texture side because then it's gonna make it look like wood when you go over it with your ink because it picks up the texture. Ah, and, and is that the same textured paper that you use That's for the your same. veggies? Okay. Yep, and this is our browns of it. So I tried okay. to kind of stay all in that same that same world, but um, now this the, the, on the veggies I had the smooth side. Now on this guy I've got the textured side to give it that wood kind of look. I love it. I love it. And I am I am currently stitching with one of my two favorite lawn fawn colors of cardstock. Can you guess what the color cardstock this is? Is that blue jay? Yes. Uh, Nicole said she bought fog because I, I talk about that quite a bit in, in videos. It's a great neutral, especially like sometimes, like for example, on the back of one of these, like if, if I put a stitched element in the center of a card, you could cut this from white cardstock and then put fog behind it so that the hearts will just be a, the light fog. So you'll see them, they'll stand out a bit more. So it's nice to add just like a little oomph to white. And this is how this is how I usually separate my my threads. I cut a long piece, and I to separate apply. I just take one and I just slowly pull and pinch the rest, and that usually will will work just fine without knotting up. And that way I can pull them apart. I like to pull the ply apart before I stitch, no matter how many plies, because I find it gives better looking stitches. I don't know. I don't whether anybody else would notice that. I have no idea, but. But you know, sometimes it's we do the detail things just for our own amusement, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I do that all it's the time. Everything, I I always have like little things. And I'm like, gosh, why am I doing this? But it makes me happy, so I do it. Yep. Half of the process, half of card making is you know the joy that we get from it, and half of it is the joy the recipient gets. And I think some of those details are probably things only we would notice, but but that, you know, it gives us more joy to share what we really put a lot of time into. Because that's, you know, I was always, I was always making something, um, but I, I never, I don't think I ever would have guessed that I'd be, because I was a math nerd. So I, I thought that that's where I would end up, you know, and that's where I went through to school for. But, you know, now I look back, like I was always trying trying to start little businesses, making things. And so I can kind of see it now that that's where I, don't know, I would end up yeah. but, but at the well, time. You, yeah. Well, you, you uh, and I are, are so similar because um, I am also a math nerd and yes, you are biochemist, biochemistry. Um, and honestly, oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Look what Rebecca wants me to show because I'm such a nerd. This was from when I was a mathlete. Um, and that's still my ruler I use now because I am such a nerd. <laughs> and I use it as my ruler every day. I love it. And look I how good this thing is really held up over here. <laughs> An olive garden. <laughs> An olive. They, I remember we were so pumped because we got free olive garden at the math competition. <laughs> <laughs> That is awesome. So how did you, so, what did you finish off on there? So what I ended up doing, well, I added all my veggies on and then I put the little frame. And so it not only has like a chalkboard feel, but it also kind of feels like, um, like one of those like classic farmer's market signs. And I'm recreating a card by Yainea from our design team. Um, when I saw this card, I was like, it's so, so beautiful. Like I thought it would be so fun. Yainea is amazing. And then for the sentiment on the bottom, I used the, um, this veg, brand new veggie happy stamp set, which has our cute little mice gardening, um, which is really, really fun. And it's got all these fun veggie sentiments. So I just use the so veggie much, but I combine that with the thanks so that it, the thanks I think had that chalkboard feel to it. I love it. I love it. And you could, you could add the faces to it to make it the veggies a little more playful, or you could add the little mice on it. But I, how it is, it, it a completely different feel. I love it. 
Exactly. So I like that you could play around with it. And I'll show you the, um, I think, uh, mm -hmm. Rebecca, you had some extra dyes, right? Um, yes. Oh, the, the extra die cut veggies. Right so here. I'll show you how to use. So the die set comes with the little veggie faces. And um, here, I'll do the onion because I think he's cute. And so the little die cut veggies, you can see right there, it's this little Aww. face. And so you just layer it over top. And I'll get some low tack tape here. And then this is my little Aww. onion. And then what you can do is just take your scissors and trim a little piece of black cardstock to layer behind. The other thing you can do is cut the face out and then layer the little like smiley face pieces on top. And that's another cute look too. So you would layer it behind. So I'm just gonna add some tape. And then now I can add my Onion greens. There's something about the winking onion. I just can't. It's so cute. <laughs> we all need winking onions. Look at that. Right? Oh. You could like do a custom sentiment and like you little stinker or something. <laughs> <laughs> and so you could do this exact same card, but with the smiley faces. Ah, oh, and it changes it. Just makes it like, right? more playful. Yeah. Exactly. That's so awesome. I like that you can kind of you know, change it up depending. And there you can see the difference between like the plain car sock, which is gorgeous, or the little bit of the ink on the side. Let me show you something fun. And I also, I don't know about you, but I have tons and tons of buttons. And I think I'm going to put buttons at the center of these. I just feel like it adds to that oh. um, handmade feel, or you could do like a fun, like zigzaggy oh. stitch in there. But I, I think love I'm gonna do yeah, I, you know, I think what I like about, um, about stitching on cards, it's therapeutic, right? But I feel like it adds to that handmade feel. It makes it even more handmade-ish, you know what I mean? Yes. And so that's one of the reasons I like to do it. Now I'm going to do a fun fold for this. This is a really basic fun fold, but you take two pieces of cardstock. It's just, I'm sorry, it's one sheet of cardstock cut in half. So there's two pieces that are eight and a half by five and a half. And this is the new tide pool color, which all the world should be painted in. Just, <laughs> just put that out there. I bet Jen Shirkus would agree with me, right? Yes. <laughs> and I'm going to score this in half at four and a quarter. And I'm also going to score it at two and an eighth, which is just one groove to the right of two. So I have a score line here and a score line here, and I'll do the same thing to the other. So four and a quarter, and then at two and an eighth. And we're going to do a little zigzag fold on these. So fold over and then fold back. So both of these pieces are the exact same here. So we folded them the same way. I'm going to flip one over. So now they just zigzag an opposite way. And then you just slide them together and you've got a fun, fun <laughs> opening. Now you'll notice that there's a little gap there. The way to get rid of the gap is to just cut a little bit off of one big flap. So I'm going to cut a little bit off of this. Give it, a, give it a haircut, like you said earlier. Yep. <laughs> Got to give it a haircut. And then put some glue in here. I, how do I run out of room? I haven't even been doing anything. You've been doing the hard work and I'm running out of room here. Oh, it got, it got chaotic oh. in here. <laughs> <laughs> so now these just kind of fit into each other. And now we have like a fun, just a different fold, something different, right? So we've done, I've done this kind of fold many, many times in videos. And what I do like to do, because when you stand it up, you'll be able to see inside. I do like to take a little note card. This is just cut a little bit smaller than the card itself. So this is cut to four by five and a quarter. And I glue that right here on the inside so that when the card is standing up, you don't see that personal message that will be in here. And I'll probably stamp a sentiment on here. But first, I have a background here that I created with your um, ripple. Where yeah, the ripple backdrop. Now I gotta find it though. Oh, yeah, Vey. <laughs> it's somewhere we here, can, but it does we'll this faux it. stitching. See the faux stitching? And I just feel like, I mean, you can use that for ocean, but I also feel like it works great for a stitching card. So I die cut that from Tide Pool and it makes a piece, it cuts it automatically to be the right size. All I did was cut it in half down the center so I could add 
one panel onto this part and the other over here. So you could do pattern paper here, any of the backdrops. I just went for this one that looks kind of like faux stitching and see how it just adds a little bit of interest to that background. It's All so right? pretty. And then we'll glue, we're gonna glue this on to the front here, but I only want glue on the back half. So just on this half over here. And then glue that down. I'm gonna put something heavy on it while it dries. And this will give us a fun opening because only one side has the little hoop on it. So I'm gonna put something heavy on that. Now as for sentiment, I'm gonna probably add the sentiment off screen, but I was gonna show you the two sentiment sets that I really like for my stitching cards. So there is the So Very Mice, and it's all these adorable little mice and sewing kind of images, but the sentiment, you are so amazing. It's hard to see there, it's S-E-W. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I love you so much, thanks so much. I like how there's different sentiments you can put together here. And that one, I will probably stamp right there so that when you open it, you see that there. Let me put something on here just to keep this dry. The other thing that uh, I really like is this. Um, it, it's been used a lot, so it's inky. It's hard to tell, but there's I'm so thankful for you. <laughs> which you could stamp on a little circle and add at the center of their flower, or you're so amazing on a strip. Those mm -hmm. are the ones that I use for most, most of my stitching cards, whether these are other stitching cards, because they work perfect for it. So now this is how the card opens. And then there's a personal message inside. So you can keep the card very basic after you've done your stitching, because that has, you know, all the and you want the focus to stay on the stitching. And I'll probably add a button on there. And I might not even add a sentiment to the front. I might leave it without and do the, you're so, um, you are so amazing, this one on the inside. I like I that. Isn't that fun? And uh, your tide pool. Mm. I'm so glad you like it. Okay, so I'm popping back in here to share with you the completed cards that I finished after the live was over. Now this one, I shared most of it in the live earlier, but I did add that stamp sentiment to the inside. On the, on the front of this one, I left the sentiment off just to keep the focus on that fun stitching. Now my favorite of the cards I completed is this slimline card. It's about three and three quarter inches by eight and a half inches so that I could put three flower embroidery hoops on it. Now what I wanted to share here is the background. I used a Lawn Fawn background die cut and cut it from Lawn Fawn Fog cardstock, which is a super light gray. I love using it on white. Now, because this is a wide card and the die is only five and a half inches wide, I actually cut it twice, trimmed it to be a little narrow, and then glued the two pieces onto the background so that they meet up there in the center. So the center, right, that center hoop covers where the two background halves meet up. And that way I was able to extend that background across the wider card. Then for a sentiment, I use Sending Happy Thoughts Your Way from this Lawn Fawn Happy Hug stamp set, which is one that has some sentiments in that I reach for often. And I also use that same stamp set for the I Miss Your Hug sentiment on this third card. Now this is just a reminder that your stitching doesn't have to be like a light colored stitching. You can go bold with lots of colors like I did on this card. And for that background, one of my favorite backdrop dies from Lawn Fawn, the Radiant Heart Backdrop Die. You can't see the heart because I put my hoop on top of it, but it just gives me more use for that die. All right, so that's my video for today. Again, I apologize that the editing on these shortened live replays is a bit choppy, but it's the best that I can do. If you really wanna see more and learn more, go watch that live video. You can put it on as background noise and learn a thing or two. Now, if you are interested in anything that Kelly and I talked about today, it's linked below in my YouTube description, including that great discount code and free gift offer. At the end here, I'll link to a couple other related videos. I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll be back soon with more to share.